Hey everybody, Drew here from DAB Studios, Drew Allen Brown Studios. So today I wanted to talk to talk to you guys about microphones, and specifically a really common question that we get asked, uh, which is, do I need a thousand dollar to a three thousand dollar microphone? Do I really need that Neumann U87 in my home studio? Short answer: No, no, you don't. Um, in fact, that just about everybody online, uh, I guess I can't say everybody online, but you, you look at most of the, the good online reviewers and good online, online tutorials, uh, for home recording stuff. If you're running a professional studio and you have a studio, a big professional studio, uh, separate from your house, um, yeah, you know, your chances are you're going to have a couple U87s, you're going to have some other Neumanns, you're going to have some Royers, you're going to have some really nice equipment in there. In a home studio, most of us don't have that stuff. We have to kind of settle uh, within our budget, you know, especially if you have a life. <laughs> if you have a life outside of audio, you you have to kind of settle. Um, but settling's the wrong word. It's not really settling. You You just have to utilize different kinds of equipment and shoot for the same kind of result, which can totally be done with today's market. There are so many, so many great, great microphones out there that really aren't that expensive. Um, Blue, I'm big fan of Blue's products. Blue Microphones has some really fantastic stuff out there um, in their condenser fields. Uh, haven't tried any of their tube stuff. Quite frankly, it's a little over my budget. Um, you know, I, I have one thousand dollar microphone in here. Um, period. That's all I have is one thousand dollar microphone, and it's a Blue Dragonfly. And I actually bought it used, so I got it for half price. I got it for five hundred bucks, and it's a killer mic. It absolutely is a killer, killer mic. But outside of that, the next expensive micro, most expensive microphone I have. This guy right here, uh, which is a dynamic mic. It's not even a condenser mic. It's a Shure SM7B. They're in every studio. Everybody's got this thing. They're 350 bucks. It's not horribly expensive, but for a home studio budget, it's a little bit of money. So, um, but they're great. Fantastic mics. A lot of the other money that you get goes into other equipment. You know, you get your preamps, you get your compressors, you get your EQs your laptop, everything else. But getting back to the microphones, you don't need that $1,000 mic. Don't get me wrong, I love that Blue Dragonfly. But you can get by without it. I can use the SM7B and get phenomenal, phenomenal results. I can use some of these other microphones and get great results. Excuse me. So the question today is, if you're getting started, if you're just getting started, you're new into the audio scene, but you want to make pretty close to or or really professional level audio, do you have to get these big time microphones? And the answer is no, you, you don't. Um, there's a couple different things you can do and a couple different ways you can look about doing this. If you're just getting started, there's some things you need to think over, like, you know, how much do you have in your budget? Uh, what kind of music are you going to record? Is it going to be just an acoustic guitar in yourself? Um, is it just going to be recording your electric guitar? Are you just looking to record yourself shredding on your electric guitar to send off to your buddies? Are you uh, looking to do a demo? Are you looking to do an EP, full-length album? Uh, are you going to be recording a full band? You know, these are some things that you really have to think of when you think, uh, what kind of microphone am I going to get? And are you going to be recording other people? There's a huge one. Because what might sound good with you and your voice and your instrument might not sound good with everybody else. So you might have to get a couple different mics down the line. But when you're getting started, you can really get going with one microphone. Because if it's just you and your, let's say, guitar, most people when we start doing this, we start with either a keyboard or we start with an acoustic guitar and our voice. So you need like one microphone. There's a couple different ways to do this. Okay, if you're going to be recording an electric guitar in your voice, there's there's something about electric guitars that, especially when you go through the amp, 
what might work, what microphones might work for a clean sound might not work on a distortion sound. Uh, going back to that Blue Dragonfly, sounds killer on clean tones. And you start getting into a little bit of an overdrive, sounds great. You get in there really overdriving or pushing distortion on that thing, it gets really, well, it gets choppy. It just doesn't sound good. It, the, the distortion side of that, it just picks up too much of the high end, and it loses a lot of the tone. It just doesn't sound great. So if you're recording electric guitar and vocals, things like that, uh, there's one microphone I would push for to start with. And really, it's a, it's a great starting point. And it's a mic that you find in absolutely every studio. It is a Shure SM57. I'm sure you've seen these guys if you've been doing audio work uh, or playing music for any length of time. You've seen them. They're all over the place. It's a fantastic mic. It's in every studio, basically every live venue, church, doesn't matter. They're everywhere. It's an SM57. Great mic. Um, in fact, I just did an audio seminar a couple weeks ago at a church and going down through the EQ chain. Because if you're doing, if you do audio at churches, uh, you know, you're dealing with volunteers. And so sometimes not everybody can show up for rehearsal and they kind of show up first thing in, on Sunday morning <laughs> and away you go. And some microphones just don't sound right on everybody. You know, it might sound great with one person, you get on to the next person and all of a sudden that microphone just doesn't sound good. And I told him, if you're in a situation to where you're messing with the EQ and you just can't get their voice to sound right, change the mic. The microphone is that first layer of EQ. It's that first step in EQ. And if you don't have a lot of time to mess around and try to figure out what mic to put there, grab an SM57. Because these guys just have a tendency to sound really nice and warm, sound really good on most people. You know, 58, great first choice. But there are times that the 58 doesn't sound right and the 57 does. Uh, there's times that the Sennheiser E835 doesn't quite sound right. The 57 does. If the microphone you're using doesn't sound right, I tell them, try this first. This would be the first next one if you're if you're short on time. Because it just has a tendency when other mics don't work. This mic seems to work. Uh, so this would be a great dynamic mic to try. If you're starting out doing electric guitars, things of that nature, start with a start with like a, an SM57. They're a hundred bucks. They're not an expensive mic. However, if you're gonna go more acoustic guitar and vocals, uh, a dynamic mic like an SM57, they just don't, they don't sound rich enough. They don't sound full enough. You lose some of that dynamics. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I know guys who record acoustic guitars with SM57 and put hours of work into it, and they can actually make them sound really good. Um, but if you're trying to do an acoustic guitar and you want it to have that studio feel, that studio vibe, you've got to get some kind of, you know, a condenser mic. This is a very inexpensive, very, very inexpensive microphone. Uh, this is an MXL 990. Um, not my favorite microphone, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, it's cheap. It's really, really cheap. You can find this on like Musician's Friend, Guitar Center, all that stuff all the time for 80 to 100 bucks. Every now and then it'll be the stupid deal of the day or, you know, whatever the deal is for whatever site you're looking at, and you can get them for, you know, 60, 70 bucks. They're, they're relatively, relatively inexpensive, uh, especially for a condenser mic. The nice thing about these mics, the thing that I really do like about them, is they are designed internally like some really, well, a lot higher end microphones. So there are a couple mods that you can do to this if you are handy at all. If you can get away with using a, a flathead and a Phillips head screwdriver without ripping things apart and, and destroying them, um, and a pair of pliers, and you can be gentle with to, to modify uh, the head cap here, you know, modify the gasket <laughs> and uh, the, the basket anyway. Um, if you can modify this, because it, it comes with three layers, you can pull the first two out, um, cleans up a lot of that tinniness. And then there's, even on eBay, there's um, a mod kit for it that people have actually gone out, and I think it's Octava Mod that's actually put it out. Um, it's eight bucks, 
it's eight bucks. But they went in, they figured out which circuitry points, uh, what resistors to replace. They send you the resistors. They send you um, all the information as to what you need to do, how you need to do it. If you're comfortable with a soldering iron, best eight dollars you can spend. I picked up a mystery box from a a failed podcast on Craigslist. It had, in fact, the only reason I bought it is it had um, three tabletop mic stands, four pop, pop filters, these guys right here, which is a must have. If you don't have a pop filter, get one. Um, you've got to have it. It kills the plosives to where you can really speak right into the microphone, hit those P's and B's really hard, and it breaks it up to where it doesn't kill the audio. Okay, so you got to have a pop filter. Um, but anyway, it had some pop filters. Had a couple other things. Had a, a little two two channel uh, USB audio interface. Had a green screen. I don't need the green screen. I don't really do film. I'm using my cell phone right now to film this, uh, so I don't do a lot of film. Um, but it had all that stuff in it, and it had two of these guys. That's actually where I got this, and I still have them, and I still use them. And I went on eBay, and I got that eight dollar mod kit. I mean, there's a dollar's worth of dollar or dollar fifties worth of resistors in the thing, but because they had gone through and and told you you need to take this out, you need to take this out, take this out, and replace it with these, and go in and do it. There's like a dollar fifty worth of components. You know, I figured seven dollars was worth it. I'd spend the seven, the extra seven dollars or whatever, and give it to them for doing all the research and uh, and helping me out on that. And I'll tell you what, this thing is now a fairly decent microphone. It's got it's got a massive proximity effect though. So you get really close to it, and all of a sudden you get really deep and boomy. Um, but it, the low end really filled out. It feels a lot more natural. Doesn't feel real tinny like you're in a can. It's it's really. I would rate this up there with a three or four hundred dollar microphone. After that eight dollar mod, and it's not even a hundred dollar microphone. In fact, I picked up that mystery box for forty bucks, and I got two of them. And so I now have two other microphones that are rated up there at three, four hundred dollar microphones, um, at twenty twenty bucks a piece. Uh, less than that if you take off the price of the pop filters and the tabletop mic stands and everything else. So cheap, inexpensive condenser mic, but if you're handy at all with an, a soldering iron, with a pair of pliers and screwdrivers, um, you can turn this into a really pretty nice microphone. Um, other than that, you know, yeah, you don't need the thousand dollar mics. You can get by with less expensive mics. In fact, it's kind of the fun part of doing a home studio is using less expensive equipment and getting that higher end quality product so that you can turn around and have people go, wow, what did you use to do this and go, well, I, I use, I used an MXL 990. I used some really inexpensive gear and you know, it gets annoying sometimes when you, you have somebody come in your studio and, oh, you just have this. Yeah, but it's not the equipment necessarily. It's how you use it and what you can do with it when it's done. That's what's making home studios so fun and so interesting is changing the paradigm of the recording industry. You don't have to have the high-end Neumann. In fact, uh, Octava Mod has a mod for that. They call it the Hulk. To where they basically turn it in, if I'm not mistaken, they turn it into like a U87 AI um, clone to where it's not perfectly identical, but it is really, really close. They replace the capsule on it. They do a bunch of other electronic work on it. And the thing sounds a lot, a lot like a U87 AI. Phenomenal microphone. If you wanted to put another three or $400 into that microphone. But if you can turn this into, you know, turn a $50 mic used into a $300 mic and still get phenomenal results. You don't necessarily need that. I kind of like the fact that this has a little bit different characteristic than a U87. I like that. I like that different microphones have different characteristics and finding the place for them and, and learning what they sound like, where to put them, and how to use them. That's what makes this interesting is, is taking the time putting the energy in and really utilizing the equipment that you have. You know, um, you'll see more and more in these videos. That's something I do. I like to take less expensive components. I like to take less expensive um, parts and pieces and change them a little bit 
so that they're all of a sudden more expensive pieces. And it takes a lot of research. You know, you've got to you've got to be able to to figure out, you know, where to go and read things online. Read the reviews, dig through them, find out what can be modded. Cuz sometimes they put something out that's low end, it's kind of junky. It really is just low end and kind of junky. Sometimes they put stuff out like the MXL 990 that's low end, kind of junky, but it's designed after high end gear and they've just changed a couple parts on it to make it lower end so it's less so it's more cost effective and they can sell it for cheaper. You change those parts out, all of a sudden you've got a lot higher end piece of equipment. Um so you know, different things you can work at, different things you can do. Home studios are fun. Use what you've got. If you're getting into this, don't go and spend $1,000 on a microphone. You know, you got to make sure you have your uh, an audio interface. doesn't have to be super fancy, but get an audio interface. Don't plug it into the to the microphone jack on your computer. I did that. Don't, don't do that. It sucks. It's horrid. Um, get an actual DAW. You can use Audacity. It's free. It works well. I mean, really, it, it does. Uh, you can get Reaper. It's not free, but it's practically free as far as DAWs are concerned. Um, a lot of audio interfaces will actually come with something. It'll come with like Cubase or something like that. Get a product. Learn how to use it. Have fun with it. They're all basically the same. They might rename something, change where it's at, but but use a DAW. You know, so get a half what you can get a cheap mic, but get a half what decent cheap mic. Uh, most stores will let you try them out, or they'll have a good return policy. So if it doesn't work for your voice, um, get an interface, get a DAW, hook it up go start making something make something that you love and that's something that you want to shoot for it's you know music is art it's not science it's art it's subjective make it something that you love that's why it's yours anyway that's it here for today i'm drew brown from drew allen brown studios have a great one